Federal provincial finger pointing is happening as we speak with a $5 billion electric vehicle battery plant and 2,500 jobs hanging in the balance. Stellantis is already building a big plant over in Windsor, Ontario. The province and the feds announced it actually over a year ago. But since then, Volkswagen announced its own plant in St. Thomas, Ontario and was able to secure huge government subsidies to the tune of $13 billion. Why the difference? Well, south of the border, U.S. President Joe Biden is offering big business subsidies through what's known as the IRA, and Canada forked up cash to compete. Stellantis now wants a piece of that pie. This week, the company halted most construction, saying the feds are not living up to their end of the bargain. Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland, though, is pointing at Ontario. The way to ensure that the federal government's industrial policy delivers for the whole country is to ensure that provinces that are getting the direct benefit pay their share. Ontario's Premier Doug Ford insists he doesn't even know what the feds think a fair share would mean for Ontario. He is, however, under pressure from his own opposition to get a deal done. Will the Premier tell my community what specifically he'll do to support Windsor workers and ensure the Stellantis investment isn't lost? Will he step up? We're the ones who created the deal. We're going to make sure Windsor that West deal happens order. on top of the $25 billion of other deals, no matter if it's a battery manufacturer or an auto manufacturer. The member voted against it. They're anti-development, anti-housing, anti-building highways, they're anti-building hospitals voted against the hospital in Windsor that we're building. This is about no, 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 no. I think the cheese has slipped off the cracker with that number. On that note, let's bring in the front bench panel. With me this evening, former Nova Scotia Premier Stephen McNeil. He's now a strategic business advisor for the law firm Cox & Palmer. Former Alberta MLA and Cabinet Minister Gary Marr is here. He's the President and CEO of the Canada West Foundation. Former Ontario NDP MPP Gratin Singh is here. He's now Vice President at Crestview Strategy. And of course, we'll disclose he also happens to be the brother of NDP leader Jagmeet Singh. And the Globe and Mail's senior political reporter, Marika Walsh, is here as well. Welcome, uh, Gratin, and I like all your hand movements to show your enthusiasm. <laughs> it's great to, have you. great to have you with us this evening. Uh, I'm going to start off with you, Stephen. Uh, this fight between the premier and the federal government playing out in the public eye, are you surprised to see it all kind of, I think Flavio Lope called it, we're watching the sausage get made. Are you surprised that we're watching that sausage get made in this instant at this juncture? Uh, I, I am a bit. It's a bit surprising the back and forth between uh, the federal government and the provincial government. You would have thought the deal with Solantis would have been solidified you know, last May when it was brought out. If it indeed is in fact the issue uh, for this deal is that there's Solantis is trying to renegotiate based on what happened with Volkswagen, uh, then I think the federal government is going to be very careful. And I think the province of Ontario needs to join with the federal government to say this deal was made before uh, the inflationary act came out. We're sticking to this plan uh, and move forward. Because uh, as I said to you the last time we talked about uh, uh, mm -hmm. governments doing uh, corporate handouts, you end up in this kind of conversation, this situation. How do you continue to compete? You're held hostage each and every time unless you put a marker in the ground and hold firm on it. But that will require all political parties, all, both levels of government to do that. Uh, Garatan, I don't see any uh, political sort of reality in which what Stephen laid out as sort of principled as that may be, that actually happens just because of the sort of political dynamics at play. Both the provincial government and the federal government have predicated their economic branding on landing big, big deals like this one. And then also you've got kind of the granular level of politics of all the ridings that are represented by various parties. Like it's a very politically competitive area in southwest Ontario. It's an incredibly competitive area, and we know that this is crucial to so many people, right? This is something that's going to bring jobs to a community that needs these jobs. These are a really important investment for Windsor. And and that's why I think alongside with this kind of promises that the, that the federal Liberal government is making, that they need to make sure that you know, these kind of uh, investments come with good paying union jobs. It comes with uh, the investment to make sure that we see this plant in Windsor for a long time. And, and it's shocking, really, that this has come to this. It's shocking that uh, this is being played out in the public eye right now, uh, something that, frankly, the Liberals made a promise on and they should be carrying out with. 
Gary, uh, it, it, the point that Stephen makes and, and Gertan as well, like the, there's no doubt that this is very important, but if you think about the precedent that both Volkswagen and this sets, the degree to which now a, co a corporation can dictate the conditions of what it takes, how much of our money it takes in order to secure their investment is really, uh, it's really interesting. I don't know, it's hard to see what other choice we have given what's happening in the U.S. though. You know, uh, I want to go back, first of all, to when the announcement was made back last May. Uh, parties were falling over themselves to take credit for it, uh, saying, <laughs> we did this, we did that. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it reminds me of the old adage that uh, success has many fathers, but failure or lack of success is a lonely orphan. And now uh, the parties are pointing at each other saying, you know, uh, you know it's your fault or it's your fault. And my guess, and I, I speculate on this, I'm in Alberta, I'm a long ways from Windsor, uh, but if I were to speculate on what happened, there was such a rush to get the Stellantis deal announced that there may have been some details that were not worked out. All the I's weren't dotted and all the T's weren't crossed. And now maybe that's what gives Stellantis the ability to say, uh, you know what, you're not living up to your commitments. Well, I mean, what were those commitments? We really don't know. And maybe, maybe there were some pieces that weren't negotiated yet. And then when Stellantis saw the kind of money that was being tossed out for Volkswagen, they thought, hmm, maybe we left some money on the table. I, you know, it, it, is, it is hardball on the part of Stellantis. I think this has been part of their history um, in, uh, in southern Ontario. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it does create a challenge for both levels of government and, and, and different political parties uh, with respect to trying to, you know, get the right thing done. Uh, but, you know, uh, there, is, there is a challenge because people in Windsor uh, would want those jobs to be made and uh, to be part of the supply chain of producing batteries mm -hmm. uh, for what appears to be the direction that many automakers are going. Uh, Garat and Marika makes the point that that's, that it's shocking, and I think there's a couple reasons a lot of people feel that. First of all, it's very odd how it's just so public, right? Yeah. But second of all, on this issue, um, and especially this issue, the province and the federal, the province of Ontario and the federal government, which are not natural allies in any you know political reality, have been close mm -hmm. allies, have been partners, and even watching them try to <laughs> accuse of th accuse each other of things right now is like it feels almost uncomfortable. Like I love them, but they got our pay mom more. and dad gonna be okay. Yeah, like it's 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 in, in a very interesting political dynamic. It is a very interesting political dynamic, and I think there's a few layers to it. I think first of all, you know, Ford and and the federal government have learned to get along because the federal government has handed out a lot of cash. <laughs> and that has been mostly the unifying factor be before all of those different um, podiums and photo ops that they've had in the last few years. And this is a case where it appears that the federal government is asking Ontario to pony up. So the rules are reversed a little bit, and I think that speaks to it. But Premier Doug Ford also really needs this. He campaigned winning blue collar workers, winning private sector unions. And so he also needs this to be a success. And I think Ottawa knows that and has some, you know, there is some push and pull there and some negotiating leverage, I think, for Ottawa to say, hey, this is also happening in Ontario. I do think there is that argument that Freeland, the deputy prime minister, made today about the regional fairness of it. If the rest of Canada just sees tens of billions of dollars poured into oh, Ontario, I'm sure they do, yeah. you know, there is a problem for the Liberals there as well. So I think there's a few factors at play, and I think it all blew up because the prime minister went to Asia this week.